You wake up one morning ready to start your day. Then all of a sudden your retina tears. Your girlfriend leaves you. The world runs out of chicken, so you're stuck eating fried goose. Your parents stopped loving you because you couldn't color grade your footage. You could pre-produce, but when it comes to post, you're left asking a rock for advice. Maybe color balancing may be right for you. Ask your editor if color grading may be right for you. Once prescribed daily, a proper colored image could help prevent grayness, an unsharp image, and increased retention time. Can you afford 300 a month? Huh? I can't afford $300. What about you $10 a day for a month? Three, you said $10? That's it. That's it. It's $10 a month, not 20. Nah, for real though, if you guys really want to avoid that $10 a day for a month, go ahead, like, share, subscribe, and I'll show you guys how to beef up that Canon R5. Let's hop right in, babe. All right, y'all, now that we got this bad boy fired up, let me go ahead and adjust some settings in my menu tab in the Canon R5. What I like to do is I like to shoot an 8K D and recording my proxies in 4096 by 2160 IPB. Now let me go ahead and show you guys how to set it up like that. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna go to the wrench. And once we hit the wrench, we're gonna go into the first page and we're gonna go to record function, press that, and we're gonna go into record options. We're gonna shoot raw in our CF fast and we're gonna shoot our proxies in our SD card. Now, let's go ahead and go back to the camera settings and let's adjust a couple other things. Now we're gonna go into the third page and we're going to adjust our white balance to custom. Now, the reason why I do it in custom is because I like to get my own white balance on scene and I like to use a color checker. Let's go to Canon Log Settings. Now on your Canon Log Settings, I want you to use C-Log3. Go down to color space and change it to cinema gamut. All right, y'all, now that we got this bad boy fired up, let's go ahead and get into color grading. Before I go ahead and go into color grading, let me go ahead and show you guys my settings and what I use on an everyday basis when it comes down to grading my footage. So first you're gonna go into file and then you're gonna go ahead and go into project settings. So since this is shot in 8K raw, make sure your timeline resolution is the same. When we go into color management, I like to leave it at DaVinci YRGB and my color space at Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. Since it's only one clip, I don't need my timeline open or my clip. Now that we got everything together, let's go ahead and do the first thing, which is to adjust our camera raw settings. We're gonna change that to full res Canon. We're gonna do clip actually, not Canon metadata. We're gonna leave white balance as shot, cinema wide gamut. Our gamma is Canon log two. Let's change that to three because that's what we shot in. And as you could see, a lot of the noise disappeared. And now we got our first note. This is where we get into the grading process. Go ahead and do a CST, which is a color space transform. I like to do color space transforms when it comes down to YouTube videos. And I like to use the ACES transform when it comes down to doing short films and things of that nature. So to get to that, we're going to go to effects and we're going to drag on our color space transform. Now it's super key that you name your node so you don't get lost in the sauce, you feel me? So CST, and we're just going to follow along with these settings. If you shot in exactly the way I showed you, so our input color space is gonna be Canon Cinema Gamut. And as you could see, a lot of saturation and contrast was added onto the footage. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and change the input gamma to Canon Log 3. 
Now, the next two things that I'm going to do isn't going to change the clip at all, only because that's what we have our timeline in. We like to park our CST towards the end and we're going to grade before it. So what I'm going to need you guys and gals to do now is to hold shift S to create a node before. And the first thing we're going to do is adjust our white balance WB, right? Like Warner Brothers. All right. I guess that joke wasn't funny. Anyways, <clears throat> now that we got our white balance, because, you know, I didn't do it in camera. Look, it's super key to make sure that all your settings is a one in your camera so you ain't got to worry about a dang thing in post but anyways like i said so in order to adjust the white balance and there's so many ways to go about doing this my way of doing it is going into the logs and adjusting it via the offset or the temperature slash tint now that my shirt is white i can go ahead and adjust the white balance according to my shirt or I can adjust the white balance according to this white on the color checker, which I'm holding in my hand, which you should be holding in your hand too, if you are a video editor, because that thing right there is going to save your life. We need the vector scope open. And as you can see, it's super colorful and these colors are going all over the place, but we're gonna go ahead and fix that come post. And like I said, this color checker is going to help us out with that. Be mindful as well of your shot. The reason why the magenta and the red and the yellows is going all over the place is because my laptop is orange. My background is purple and my background is red. So of course they're gonna explode out onto the vector scope. Now, a key secret when it comes down to color grading is lighting your scene properly. So let me go ahead and white balance it. So what I like to do is look at the vector scope and look at my shirt and I could already tell this scene is super warm. So I'm just going to move my offset a little bit and as you can see this middle part right here on the vector scope is moving around and I'm just perfecting it you got to be super accurate just go slow nice and slow so and then I'm gonna change it through my temperature and my tent right it's still a little bit too warm for me and let's adjust the boom Next thing we're going to do is adjust our exposure. So we're going to do option S to open up a new node. Once again, rename it EXP for exposure because we don't need to spell exposure all the way. <clears throat> so we're going to use these three lines, your black point, your midpoint and your bright point. And we're going to go ahead and adjust our exposure that way to get it perfect. Now we're going to open up our waveform. I can see the high point there, the midpoint here, and the low point down there. Seeing the whole frame helps as well too. So that's how I'm going to do it now. I'm not going to isolate it because, you know, it's tripping right now. So first thing we're going to do is attack our highlights, right? Bring, as you can see, this part right here going up a little bit, right? And then we're going to come after our shadows bring down bring that down a little bit right attack our lights mm -hmm. that's good adjust our blacks it's already down a little bit now i'm the type of person i don't like to crush my blacks too too much oh and i forgot to mention that my power window is still on so i'm gonna deselect that and you see how I got that much darker because it was only correcting the exposure within the power window because I forgot to turn it off. So now we can go ahead and adjust it some more. My blacks are a little bit too crushed for my flavor. So I'm going to bring it up some and I'm going to bring my darks up a little bit too. So you could you could still see, you know, what's going on in the black. And it's looking really clean right now, ain't it? Let me stop going in and out so you can see it for show, for show. Our exposure seems fine, but I like to also add a little bit of contrast, but I think 
I need to leave a little bit more room for my contrast. So by doing that, let me bring the light down a little bit and highlight. Oh, and if you press this little sun thing, it'll tell you exactly what you're adjusting. So for the highlights, it's pretty much the computer screen behind me. For the lights, it's pretty much my shirt, a little pieces of my skin. And I guess the speaker for the shadow, it's pretty much the whole shot, right? <laughs> and then you go into the darks, which is basically the blacks here and the blacks, which I guess there's no blacks in this shot. So now that we got the exposure handled, let's go ahead and create a new node doing option S again. And we're gonna adjust our contrast here. And it's already very contrasted, but let's adjust it a little bit. Let me bring my blacks up a little bit, bring my highlights down a smidge. All right, there you go. And let's create a little S curve. So let's bring up our mid highs and let's bring down our mid lows a little bit. All right, and let's bring up our midpoint. And that's basically where my skin's gonna be parked. And that's all I'm gonna really do for the contrast. Now it looks a little overkill. So let me adjust it a little bit more. All right, bada bing, bada boom, wha bam. Now we're going to adjust all these colors and that's where this comes in handy. So we're gonna go into our curves and we're going to adjust our hue, saturation, and luminance. So your hue is basically where your color is parked on the color chart. Your saturation is the intensity of the color and your luminance is how bright that color is. And we're gonna adjust all of that. Create a node after our CST. When you're adjusting your colors, make sure to put it in after your CST. If you move your cursor over, it's gonna be an automatic eyedropper tool. So let's adjust our yellows. This is the hue part first. So click on that and then you got your yellow point and we're going to adjust it into the middle of that square. Now let's go into saturation and let's properly saturate these colors. Now you can click these buttons here. It's the same thing as putting the eyedropper tool and that's what I did. So for the red, it seems a little bit too overkill. So I'm gonna put it into the middle. Now we're playing a little game, which is put the dot in the square. So let's go ahead and do that. to do with the luminance is bring up the important colors which is red this is where our skin kind of is make it a little bit brighter our yellow is kind of where our skin's at too make it a little bit brighter i like to go very subtle with these so now let's turn off our power grade so we could see what that did so now our colors are accurate okay so the next thing we need to do is adjust our skin tones now we go back into the color checker and we can adjust our skin tones this way, right? But what I like to do is actually use my actual skin. We got to create another node, right? And we stop naming things. Let's call that HSL for hue, saturation, luminance. And this is for our skin tone. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a section on my skin. This little line here, as I mentioned before, if you go into the section and you checked the skin tone indicator, it's gonna show you exactly where your skin should be. My skin's a little bit off. What I like to do, and there's a handful of ways to do it, but my way of doing it is going into the curves, going into our hue versus hues. Click on my skin. Skin's usually in the red because our blood is red. So no matter if you're black or white, or Hispanic, your skin's going to be in the red area. And we're going to adjust my skin tone to where it should properly be, which is right there. 
it's falling more and more on the skin tone indicator, right? We're gonna turn off our power grade. And as you can see, my skin is looking accurate. So if we turn that off, it's a subtle change. And to be honest with you, we are very close to done here. Now we're gonna do the final touches. And since this was shot at an 800 ISO, we got some noise in our footage. Now I hate, hate, hate noise reduction. My suggestion always is just leave the footage as it is. It looks more natural with a little bit of noise in it. But if you're one of those people that are like, no, Keith, I need clean footage. I don't want no grain in that bit. Then let me go ahead and show you guys how to properly eliminate noise reduction. So noise reduction is always going to be the first node ever. So we're going to go to the white balance part and hit shift S to create a node before and do a noise reduction node. You know, you usually want to do the CPU heavy effects last so you don't die in the grave compost because you're going to you're going to blow your brains out. Now, noise usually parks in the darker areas and in the reds. So be mindful of that. So we're going to go into the motion effects. And here's what I usually like to do. I usually like to choose three, change that to better, hit that at around like 8.8 disconnect the chain link here because our noise is not really going to fall in our light but more in our color and i usually like to bring that around 12 to 15 let's do 12.4 we took away some of the noise and if we go to the very end of our node tree give it some time this is how our footage looks you guys tell me what you think and if there's any other to tutorials y'all boys and girls want to learn and if you guys want to edit like your boy please leave a comment down below it's all good in the neighborhood deuces